What's up my friend, welcome back to another video and today we're taking a quick look at the newest libraries from Straight Ahead Samples called Light as a Flutist and Sketches of Flugelhorn. So I believe this is the first time that Straight Ahead Samples has actually released two libraries at once, um, very different as well. One is a brass instrument, one being the woodwinds and quite different ranges as well. So uh, I think prior to this, they also released the real piano, which is available for free. Really, really cool. I'm personally enjoying using this as kind of a background, uh, not, not really honky tonk piano, but just like a lounge sort of piano, really nice. And then before that they had the Atomic Big Band, which is personally my favorite library so far. But let's take a quick look at these two libraries. So each instrument goes for 129 US dollars or 130. And uh, it's very, very similar to the other instruments. If you know the Smart Delay concept, and if you don't, uh, definitely check out my reviews of Birth of the Trumpet, the Tenor Colossus, the Eminent Trombone, those ones, and the Atomic Big Band. We covered the straight, uh, Smart Ahead more in detail. Smart Delay, sorry, it's not Smart Ahead. Um, and yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff you can learn on the sales pages. Um, one really cool thing is it's available for Contact Player, so you do not need the full version of Contact. Plus, they usually take very little room on your CPU as well. So the flute here, for example, is 3.86 gigabytes installed, which is less than four. And then let's take a quick look at the flugelhorn here as well. Let's see, so I had 129 and 2.6 gigabytes installed, so even smaller than the flute. Um, yeah, so the magic of these libraries, again, really lies in the smart delay. But first of all, let's take a quick look at the real time first. So let me just play these instruments a little bit for you. Really cool how these libraries come with both, uh, or light as a flute, is comes with both the concert flute and an alto flute. So we're going to explore both, and then we'll take a look at the flugel horns real time, and then we'll turn on the smart delay and see the difference it kind of makes. So here is the light as a flutist. We'll just play the concert flute a little bit in real time. Yeah, so it's pretty similar to the other straight ahead samples libraries. You get a range of the standard articulations, but you also get some jazz oriented articulations as well. So the more common ones, legato, staccato, staccatissimo, those are in pretty much every concert library, right? And then what's really cool is they give you a tongue dock option, but also the forte piano, which is really nice if you want that extra attack. Um, other libraries might say this as mercato or accent or something, but forte piano is really descriptive. Half step trill, whole step trill, you'll notice these trills are slightly on the slower side, but in smart delay, I think the engine will kind of compensate and read your performance and make sure that it's playing the right speed. And if you're not happy with that, you can always trigger it from there as well, like kind of edit it. Uh, flutter tongue, falls, and, and um, long falls, scoops, right? So the basic ones there and some dynamics with crescendos, hairpins, and bends as well. Okay, let's try to smart delay. Let's play a couple phrases and then we'll move on to the alto flute. So here we go.
yeah, so that's just a couple of, you know, really quick little phrases. But one thing that really stands out to me is I, I love how there's these breathing noises that are incorporated into the performance as well. I don't have to add in any breath noise. And of course, the smart delay is taking care of all of that stitching and, and making it as seamless and smooth as possible. But yeah, it's really cool how it immediately just jumps to life and everything just sounds um, immediately more convincing as compared to the real-time performance. You also notice in real-time, you get more of those overblown sort of articulations, but it, it's it's a little more dialed back when you play a little softer. So the velocity is is taken into account with the engine as well. So if you ride the mod wheel down, but you also play a little bit lighter, uh, the library will naturally play some of those quieter samples. So just be careful um, that you are programming exactly how you're desiring the performance in real time. And then you want to switch on the smart delay, move the MIDI region four beats back, and then you'll get that performance. Okay, let's quickly move on to uh, the alto flute. So here we have um, the real-time performances. Okay, now let's turn on the smart delay and play a little bit here. So for alto flute, I tend to think of it as a slightly more mellow instrument. The, the, the tone of the instrument is slightly uh, more calm and more intimate as compared to the regular flute, which is a bit more strident and it's more out there, you know? So I'm gonna play some more mellow lines here, make sure the module doesn't go way too high. And uh, yeah, let's just see how smart delay handles this. Okay, so even with Smart Delay turned on, the alto flute performance is still relatively energetic. And so it's it's really interesting. I think Light as a Flutist, the name itself kind of suggests a more uplifting, uh, exciting style of playing. So I think it still comes through here in the alto flute. Whereas I think in the following library, Sketches a Flugel Horn, this one is meant more as a, a more emotional, you know, light laid back sort of library. So even though the alto flute is a naturally more mellow instrument than the regular flute, the concert flute, it still has that sort of energetic performance. And you'll see how that comes into play here when I show you this short little clip that I put together here. Okay, finally, let's take a look at Sketches of Flugelhorn. And here is the real time. Thank you. 
Okay, one thing I find really interesting and I forgot to mention, I've talked about this in other videos as well, but uh, most of the standard articulations set themselves as the base. So when you choose some of the other articulations like trills or um, like shakes, for example, uh, falls and things like that, once you play a certain note to activate that articulation, it automatically defaults back to the basic articulation you selected previously. So if I have legato selected and then I want a single note to play, let's say uh, a doit, you can see, oh, hey, let me do that again. Okay, yeah, so it seems for me, for some reason, the, the doits are not uh, quite triggering there. So I play the doit key switch, play a note. Yeah, so it's for some reason, it's not coming out there. I'll reach out to trade about that. but. Anyway, uh, basically, when you play one of those more unique articulations, the system kind of defaults back to the original one. So yeah, if you want a legato performance and then you want uh, a you know a more unique articulation for that one note for that one moment, you play that like a flop or a scoop or whatever, and then it goes back to the regular articulation, whether that be legato, staccato, staccatissimo. And so if you want to continue playing that unique articulation, then you just have to re-trigger that key switch over and over again, which is a simple workaround. So. I think out of all three, or sorry, out of all three patches, I was going to say, um, I think the flugel horn suffers the most from sounding the most MIDI-ish in real time, but it also sounds to me the best in smart delay. So uh, let's just hear a bit of this flugel horn here. Yeah, so you see how some of the notes uh, kind of pop out there, right? And that's just my fault because I'm playing with harder velocities when I'm not trying to. And so the smart delay system is literally reading that and it's it's triggering those louder dynamics um, performances into that, that smart delay performance. Um, so yeah, you just have to be really careful because again, the engine is reading everything that you're doing. So the length of the MIDI notes, the range of the mod wheel, like how high those mod wheels are, uh, those mod values are, and uh, you know, the, the velocity you're playing at, all of that stuff is being taken into account to create a performance. And then it's expected you kind of go in and nudge it a little bit just to make sure it fits your needs there. So with that uh, being said, let's just kind of quickly listen to um, these three examples I quickly put together, one for the concert flute, one for the alto flute, and one for the flugelhorn. Uh, let's just hear them in smart delay, uh, sorry, uh, real time first. Here's the concert flute one, and then I'll put it in smart delay and so we'll see the difference. Here we go. Oh, I have to solo that first, here we go. So in terms of articulations, you can see we're starting off with legato, and then for those two staccato notes, I'm triggering staccatissimo before we hit a, uh, a fall on the very last note. So take a look at the articulations here at the very bottom. That's legato, and then a fall there, right? And I actually think it sounds pretty good in real time already, uh, surprisingly. So let's actually take this, move it four beats back now, turn on smart delay, and let's see the difference. Yeah, so it's it's kind of hard to explain why it sounds better, but I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, the, the notes are not necessarily more connected because they're more staccato performances, but in general, I think the overall tone of the room, like the way um, everything sounds put together, it feels like one complete performance rather than separate MIDI notes. And yeah, it's kind of difficult to explain why, but I just hear that. Um, connection a bit more. And this is all to the uh, close mic, by the way, right? So you notice that I don't have any of the other mics loaded, which we will hear in just a second. I want to show you those as well. But overall, the smart delay does make a little bit diff of a difference there. Okay, let's move on to um, the alto flute. Let's hear the real time performance first. Here we go. So I went with something a little bit more mellow. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, let's turn on Smart Delay. You'll notice that G kind of pokes out a little bit. I was trying to trigger a quieter G. You can see I've actually turned down the velocity there. I've uh, brought the mod wheel down all the way to the bottom, near to the bottom. I really wanted to taper away. For some reason, I can't activate that sample quite yet. And you'll hear that in Smart Delay as well. But overall, it does sound quite a lot smoother. So have a quick listen here. Smart Delay turned on. I'm going to move it four beats back. Here we go. Yeah, so really, really uh, beautiful performance. That G is poking out quite a bit there. I actually wanted the opposite, and uh, I've tried lengthening the notes, shortening the note a little bit. Um, still can't quite get that sample I'm looking for, but again, that's part of the process of just trying to fiddle with it. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's hear the final one here. Uh, it's the flugelhorn, and we'll put it back in real time there. Okay, let's have a listen. Right. Now a smart delay. And so yeah, you, you notice the performance right now is a little bit choppy, right? So let's do this. Yeah, and I love that vibrato that they, they just put in there. Um, yeah, so in real time, the vibrato is kind of lacking. You have to hold the note a little bit longer to trigger that, but overall, it just it breathes a lot more now. Again, some of those notes, I think, are poking out just a little bit too much. So worst comes to worst, I just replay the performance, making sure I play with a lot less of a velocity, make sure the mod wheel is kind of lower, but you kind of get the idea there. Okay, so before we wrap out, let me just quickly play some more in Smart Delay and show you some of these mic positions. So we've already heard the close. Let's take a look at the alto flute and we'll hear the room mic actually by itself. So I'm gonna turn down the close here. Okay, and then if we bring up the close and then maybe just blend in a little bit of the room. Let's see how that sounds combined. Yeah, so you still get the detail of the sound, but you also get a bit of that depth as well that really puts it kind of into that studio space, which is nice. And then for the flugelhorn, we've already heard the close. Let's hear a bit of the tape. Okay, kind of a warm, nice sound there. And let's hear a bit of the bleed as well. So here you're not gonna hear much of the detail of the sound, it's more of just the full body of the sound. Right, again, it really just has that studio vibe to it. So if we bring in the close, but turn down the bleed a little bit, Yeah, so for me, that's a pretty nice blend there of the room, but also hearing most of the detail there in the sound as well. And there we go. That's a, a kind of a simple overview of these three instruments. And again, they perform really the best in Smart Delay after you've 
written your your parts in in real time, tweak the articulations, make sure the velocities are as you want them. And once you're more or less satisfied in real time, then you can switch on smart delay. And there's bound to be a few niggles here and there, I'm sure. But the, the whole beauty of this is just the smart delay allows you to take that shortcut to get to a more realistic performance really quickly, as opposed to having to struggle in real time and, uh, you know, stitch together better performances and things like that. So again, big thanks to Straight Ahead Samples for uh, sending me a couple copies here to take a look at with you guys. And I hope you um, got a, a better sense of what these libraries are kind of like. Again, nothing is perfect. You know, technology can't read your mind but it's the closest we're gonna get at the moment to real life performances through virtual instruments. And I just really appreciate how Straight Ahead Samples is trying to continue to innovate with their new instruments and the technology is really, really cool. So thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in my full list of sample library recommendations, I highly wanna recommend my sample library buyer's guide. It's something I've been updating over the years. It includes a whole bunch of libraries that I use on a regular basis, ones that I'm a big fan of. And so I've organized them by different sections. I've also included the prices and how you can use them as well for your own purposes. So if you wanna keep that on hand, it's totally free. It's the first thing in the description box below and you can grab it as my gift to you for checking out this video. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much and I'll see you then. Take care, bye-bye.